Welcome everyone. You are watching Digging Deeper. It is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and I'm your host Suzine Ayub and with me I've got a really special guest, Junie. Junie. Hello. Welcome. Suzine, great to be here. Welcome, welcome. So today's episode we are going to be talking about, welcome, welcome, we're going to be talking about culture as a tool for artists. But before we get into that because that's a pretty loaded topic with a lot of things. Welcome everybody. Um, in a good way. Yeah. You know. we'll, okay, we'll, we'll see how it plays we'll, out. We'll unravel it and see, <laughs> see what comes out. Um, but before we start, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are. What's your expression? Junie, my expression is uh, rhythm. I am a rhythmist. Mm -hmm. And rhythm happens in many ways. It starts with a heartbeat. So that's where it starts for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it originates for me. Then afterwards, the music that I make. As a drummer, as a producer, uh, performing live mostly with one freak, O-N-E-F-R-E-Q, uh -huh. Q, like frequency. And we have a good, we have good vibrations. I'll say that. You, you I know, think so. Yeah. We, I think so. And it's, it's something good that, you know, a lot of people can get into. Um, we, we attract many races, many backgrounds of people. Mm -hmm musicians non-musicians so we just like uh being that catalyst or yeah. the lubricant to really make that community i think so i think you guys mm -hmm. do a good job of that welcome angela and molly hey and Blue. angela love look at that look at all these hearts so it's so interesting that you call yourself a rhythmist mm -hmm. rhythmist rhythmist yes i've never heard that being used as a description does have you always used that no Mm -mm. But always, as of within the last year, Why the <laughs> if that's always uh, the shift, is because I I've just been studying more, and I think through my studies of just uh, what music is and how just I want to approach music, and yeah. you know how I want to know about it, um, I've come to realize that you know I, I'm more of a rhythmist than just a drummer, mm. you know and. If, and what I aspire to be is more than just yeah. a drummer. I want to be somebody that explores many rhythms. Right. So the rhythms that I make on the patterns, you know, right. those types right. of patterns that I make on the drum set are also patterns that I can, I could translate to other things, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the rhythm section, for instance, when you right. talk about strictly music, right. the rhythm section is the piano, right. the drums, and the bass. It, yeah. It's actually not just the drums right. or no, the percussion, true. the hand drums, or, you know, right. shakers. No, the, the rhythm is, you know, it, this these components and how they come together right. and they form the rhythm. So I want to be able to explore all of that and not mm -hmm. just what I can do with two sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true because those three are like the core from which mm -hmm. you're finding everything else and adding everything yep. else too. Yep. That's so true. How did you get into into drumming? Uh, so it was it's just something that I soaked up uh, from. Huh, I would say my first experience with rhythm, it, you know how I perceive rhythm, and mm -hmm. just my first uh, recollection of it would be uh, in my mother's land of the Bahamas, there's there's mm -hmm. a celebration called Junkanoo. Okay. So Junkanoo happens every Boxing Day, which is December okay. 26th for y'all. Uh -huh. December 26th. Uh, Boxing Day, they celebrate that at Canada too. They do. Uh, this is where we box up the, I guess it's boxing up the Christmas presents. I think that's what it means. Is it? Yeah. I lived in Canada for a year. I think Boxing it's also Day boxing too. Like... Boxing, you know, competition. Is it? Uh, yeah, they hold boxing matches it's, on Boxing Day. Too. I didn't know that. But regardless, it was just like a big shopping thing that these people are all just like. Yeah, yeah. Boxing Day. Yeah. Well, that's how the world turns. Exactly, the the world turns that way. But yeah, I think it's Boxing Day presents. Um, but regardless, Boxing Day is uh, Junkanoo, and Junkanoo happens very early in the morning. But these are enslaved people. This is a tradition of mm. enslaved people that were in Bahamas. So these are some of the Africans that came. Uh, that are just that were throughout the Caribbean, mm -hmm. but these were Africans that were enslaved, and the, this was a way for them to celebrate. So they continue the celebration wow. through Junkanoo, and it's to it, it's this parade basically mm -hmm. of drums through downtown wow. Nassau. So in in that uh, festival, um, 
they you have these different teams that go around the downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, they do laps around the downtown uh, three times. Wow. And those laps, they're just playing music the whole time. Trumpets, horns, and uh, big, huge drums. You, big barrel drums. Mm. Then they also have smaller drums, and they have, uh, we call them rake and scrape. So, like, you know, the scraper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, cowbells, all of it. So, every it, everything is making a rhythm. Wow. People dancing. And this happens at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. So, so this is so after uh, after Christmas, uh, you you that have right. yeah. You and have how this. long does it go on for? Uh, so this it's is three laps. Who? It's it's till the sun comes up basically. Wow. Yeah. And that's that's an incredibly spiritual time to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That before in the morning. In the morning before the sun before comes the up. Before the sun comes so up. So you greet the sun. Right. So that's my first experience with rhythm, and you know I've been my grandmother lives down there, so I, you know I visit my grandmother as a, yeah. as a child, and you know I was I was blessed. I feel like I was blessed to experience that. And when you're when you're a spectator, you know especially as a kid, and when you're when you're feeling these big barrel drums yeah. that are pounding in your chest, yeah, you know, and it's I'm talking I'm talking about at least thirty of them. Right, at least yeah. thirty big barrels, and that's just that section, and that's pounding, and you know it's creating a new heartbeat for you. Like mm. your your own heartbeat don't even count anymore because that that Cause rhythm is so heavy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just overtakes your whole body. So, uh, from a very young age, before I knew how to play, um, I I felt the impact of rhythm in a very direct way right. that still lives with me today. Right. I mean. Rhythm and and drums in particular, like all types of drums, are. I feel like they're probably one of the most soulful sounds because it directly hits your heart. Mm -hmm. And you're right; it is very much in sync with your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and even like when I play, because I do a lot of rhythm section with um, Divine Providence on guitar. It's still a lot of it is following what the drums are doing, and it's still. Mm -hmm. Following that same sort of wave. Mm -hmm. But everything, yeah. everything creates a rhythm. So right. I think the the percussion and you know these drums are probably the most visible, right? You know, uh, translation of the rhythm where you can see it. Uh, but you know, everything is a rhythm. So you look at when well, you can see the sun, and you see how mm -hmm. the world turns. So that's twenty four hours. That's a rhythm. That's a pattern. That's a sequence, you know, that happens mm. every day and, and it keeps on happening. We could we could count on it, right? So so when when you have that repetition, right. us as humans, uh well first of all, are we getting to this yet? Because we're know, gonna we're, we're it's, it's kinda, fine. I mean if that's where we're are, going, that's where we're already going. In there. We're in it. Okay. We are in it. And if you guys wanna add to the conversation, you can add to the conversation. Oh well, Muhammad, you're on. This is her name is Destiny. She's a hey, harpist. Destiny. She, she goes by Harpist from the Hood. Oh, Harpist from the you play the harp? What? In California. Ooh, from the hood, from Compton. <laughs> she's amazing. She's she's such a special being. Nice. Nice. Well, shout outs to everybody joining yeah. us. It's Christina, great, Anna, great to have y'all. I see the waves. If we could get some words too, that would be great. We yeah. we will respond. What you guys think we about, have to look sideways about for it. yeah, we do have to look sideways. <laughs> what you guys think about rhythms. That's true because everything in nature is rhythmic. Not just our own bodies and what's within our bodies, but outside of that as well. So the uh -huh. sun for sure. Mm -hmm. The seasons. That's I, one of the reasons I love li living in Michigan even though people hate the snow is I like actually witnessing mm -hmm. the cycle of life and death. It's a marker. It, it is a marker. It, it marks, yeah, for me. And that, I, I that, could do without, though, but I get what you're saying. I mean, I appreciate it's that. one of the things I, like I appreciate about it because I think there is something to say about, you know, coming into a low mm -hmm. where everything is dying and then all of a sudden the spring comes back mm -hmm. up like that. And you get to see it renew. And you get to see it renew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. What do you guys think? Renewal. Well, renewal. Spring. Renewal. Summer. Winter, fall, autumn. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, rhythm, rhythm. I think you know you see in many ways. So uh, when you when you really start to embrace it, just as a, I, I really like to talk about this in a way that's uh, democratic, I guess, or just really accessible. Mm -hmm. Is you know rhythm is something that we all experience. So we should really embrace it. And the more we embrace it, 
even if we're not a musician, I think the more you're able to just, you know, just live a, I think, a more balanced life, I, I feel, so. just I because so. you recognize, you know, things have a rhythm, even the good and bad in your life, uh, you know, everything is kind of subjective because you, you have, you know, people have different traumas and they also have different highs in their life. So yeah. it's, but there is a rhythm, you know what I'm saying? No matter what the specific circumstances, mm -hmm. it's still, it's still a rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. once you realize that it's not all bad and it's not always going to be, you know, you're on your highest and, and, you know, you're winning every day, but, mm -hmm. you know, just notice that, okay, how can you take advantage of, of that rhythm? You know what I'm saying? Those ups and downs. So, um, and realizing that's a natural part of life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Each yeah. and every person's life. Lena says, rhythm in dance and martial arts is how I experience it. Yeah. Martial arts. My dad loved martial arts. That's a nice rhythm. It's a really nice rhythm. Uh, what kind of dance? Yeah, what kind of dance? I'd like to know what kind of dance. Yeah, I mean, even within your own. For me, the fact that we have heartbeats that are rhythmic, it's such an easy way to come back to being in oneness with the earth and being in oneness mm -hmm. with nature. It's like that mm -hmm. that natural reminder of let's get back into that cycle. Let's mm -hmm. get back into that. Um, just I, I feel like it's oneness. It's being in not just oneness with yourself, but oneness and unity with cre all of creation and all of the world. Mm -hmm. Like we're all part of some unit, like we're all part of a rhythm and we don't realize we're, that we're all on yeah, it together. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, when you, so all on it together, when you say that, you, the first thing I think about is uh, the rhythms of people. So uh, I I need to think about what podcast it was, but I was listening years ago and they were, they were doing a study and just dissecting how different people in cities, mm -hmm. right? You go from one city to the next right. and people walk differently. So... Even from New York to Atlanta, Georgia, you're going to have people walking at a slower or a faster pace. Right. As a collective of people. Right. So right, in right. general, right, the people in New York, for instance, are walking, faster you, pace. you know, three seconds faster than the people in Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And But that they, they actually did a study to really uh, determine, you know, how, how people are as wow. a group walking at the same speed. So... I mean, it's real when you have these wow. these patterns. It it really affects, you know, a group of people. So you yeah. you can look deeper into how rhythm is affecting a larger group of people, not just one right. person. That's so interesting because I never thought of it like that. That's that it's a collective communal rhythm mm -hmm. that everyone falls into. Mm -hmm. I wonder if part of that has to do with um, the culture of that community and if part of that has to do with the nature in that area. Mm -hmm. Because I would see places that are by the water as a little bit slower paced. Mm -hmm. right? I can and see if that. If you're farther from the water, I feel like you would be maybe a little faster paced if you're closer in the city. Mm -hmm. But New York is surrounded by water. That's true. But they have so many buildings. <laughs> true. They have so many buildings. So you can't so they, see it. So they change, they change their nature. <laughs> That's changing the natural landscape of the area. You know, yeah. but I, I really do feel that it's uh, it's it's uh, it's cultural in a way. Um, just because, I don't know, you, you see how I'm thinking, uh, how people talk. So beyond just walking, but how people talk. Mm. They're, mm. Uh, so in Detroit, so we're speaking, you know, of our place here. So in Detroit, you have people that have roots in the in the South. Right. I have roots that that are from the South. I, I was born uh, below the Mason Dixon line. So, you know, the when you absorb that from mm -hmm. being that far down, uh, you know, or at least yeah. a few more miles closer to the equator. I don't know what it yeah. is, but you you absorb that, and even in people's speech, you notice sometimes the Detroit or even just Midwestern people sound like a little bit like they're from the South sometimes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And th I think that's because yeah. of, you know, the, the language that we're absorbing and that, that type of rhythm even. So, um, I notice it, you know, even in speech, that, that's one place yeah. that you notice it. That's so true. One of the things that I like to bring up when I'm teaching, because I teach language is how much language and dialect 
and uh, the way you speak is affected by nomadic patterns. Mm -hmm. Like wherever people are going to go, you're going to pick up things and bring it along the way. You can almost trace where people are from by that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is, that's absolutely... Uh, the great migration is real. Yeah. Absolutely. Welcome, everyone. I think this is my student. I have a student on. If ever you have a couple more waves, hearts, comments. You know. We got beautifully said. Thank you, thank you. Oh, look at who's on. Sophia, Sophia E. Sophia E. So let's get into it. What up, it. though? Yeah, let's, let's get let's into get it. Let's get into it, because we're talking about culture as a tool for artists. What does that mean? What Before we even start that, mm -hmm. what? how would you define culture? Culture, um, culture is not just music and it's not just art. It's the, it's the language that we, that we speak. It's, you know, uh, how we present ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the activities that we do, like the artifacts that we leave. The, this is our culture. So right. a lot of times when we speak about culture, <clears throat> we talk about it in the sense of just the art. And that's, that's a, I think that's a big representation of our culture. Right. And even, uh, uh, and we could get into it a little more, but even how culture is developed, a lot of it, I believe, does come through art. Right. But that is not the only way, uh, that's not the only like, presentation of culture, right. or the tangible, you know, thing that right. you can feel of culture. I mean, I would also say, yo, my fave peoples, you are my favorite people too. Hey. Um, I would say that, yeah, definitely art is a big part of it. Our language is a big part of it. Yes. Um, our traditions and our norms. Yeah, food. Food. Ooh. Food is a huge part of it. Um, and I think, um, well, I guess that goes into traditions and norms. What types of things do people do together? I think is a part of cultural expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it may be like beach culture or like <laughs> hanging out at the or mall yoga culture, culture or yoga, yoga culture, like what do groups of people do? together we spin together we, we <laughs> you know cyclists food traditions do marathons yeah food traditions absolutely um all of those things are it's almost like they're they're micro expressions of culture mm -hmm. within a bigger culture it's all part of the culture yeah so then i guess the next question for me is who do you see as culture creators so uh, as i was just saying i i feel that artists create a lot of the culture um but obviously you know food and you have these food festivals as an example right here in in detroit uh so you have the the uh uh even the the black food festival that mm -hmm. that started that quake who started not too long ago so I, I think that's kind of you know uh expanding what we think about is is the culture here right. and really kind of uh you know shedding light on right, it right um but all, all these things i feel um are culture uh, makers right it's I don't know it it's people who make things so how you have the physical things uh, the art may not always be tangible but we're creating it so I think yeah. you really see a lot of the creation in the art or something that you could see something that mm -hmm. you could feel but but uh, I feel that that's just our part as an artist as a musician that's our part in the wider like the group of people is to express that. So we're, right. we're just expressing what we feel, you know, the rhythms that we feel or the, the conversations that right. we have in the music that we write or the art that, that we present visually. Um, I think it is up to us to basically interpret what we're seeing and translate yeah. what we're seeing into a way that reflects uh, reflects it back to the group of people that we're living in right. and with. So, uh, I mean, that's how I... I see, if anything, our job as the artists who are creating right. it. But really, I think it's all of us creating yeah. it, really. What you say is really interesting because it makes me think of how I I have always believed that a person who... Look at this guy coming and changing the direction. Oh, the Stanley Clark. We're listening to Stanley Clark. If the, you have not checked out Stanley Clark, you need to check out Stanley Clark. Get your life together. Um, With Ish... Ish on the ones and twos, on the ones and ones, flipping it to two. He's now a spinner. Um, how it is, you want to come in? I'm the spinner. Look at this guy. Peace, brother. Thanks for keeping the tools going. You think I could do? Keeping the vibes right. 
You keep me happy. That's a good thing. Um, how artists, like you're saying, the artist is expressing something, right? Coming together to feast, food traditions. Good question. The artist is is expressing um, what they see in their communities. And I feel like that expression and that, um, man, what is it exactly that you said? For me, it just reminded me how an artist is really an advocate and is an activist um, by nature because you are reflecting what's happening mm -hmm. in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like what you feel and what we're going through and what we're experiencing isn't just a reflection of what's happening in our personal, you know, microcosms of our like, you know, our personal lives, but a reflection of what's happening in the community that we mm -hmm. live in. Agreed. And so part of that culture as artists who are taking, you know, as as artists who are creating in that in that cycle, part of it is speaking to what's happening and um, responding to what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So that because of that, I feel like culture is always um, just changing and moving in different directions mm -hmm. because of that. Oh, it has to. It has, it has to. to. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much what the whole. Uh, you know, anthropology, that's just that whole study of just how people are. I mean, that's, that's yeah. your study of culture when yeah. you're studying people. So the, you know, culture and all the things that are produced through it are basically the, the, the artifacts of people that we're leaving as, you know, these are things that we've done, we've eaten, right. we listen to, we look at, you know, what right. we watch and, you know, all of it. So, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, it, it speaks exactly for that uh, period and time for this group of people. Mm. Let's take this comment. Um, Schumann resonance and collective cycles. Artists are open portals, vessels of the greater picture. The greater picture. Wow. And Sophia E said, she's That's pointing to that. Yeah. Um, I would definitely agree. Vessels of the greater picture. Well, I guess for me, that's an interest. It brings up an interesting question of people who are creating culture, so to speak, and people mm -hmm. who are engaging with culture. Mm -hmm. And if there is a difference, and is that line always shifting? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I have thought about uh, that that line, you know, where Or even is. if there is a line, if this is just yeah. something that I'm just saying what's popping up in my head. I feel, uh, if if anything, it's really, as I said before, it's it's... I feel like it is our job as artists to basically digest what we're seeing in our culture or in you know this group of people, and and spit it back out, you know, and translate it or mm. be the mirror as much as possible for for this group of people because right. uh, again, there's many ways to express culture, but when it's when it's when it's <coughs> visual these are just the tools that we have the instruments that's what we call our things instruments because right. these are tools right. these are the tools that we have to express what we're hearing what we're seeing mm -hmm. and you notice some of the best songs uh, some whether it's hit songs or or the simple songs or hymns some of the best songs are, are connecting with us on a human level right. and things that talk about us as, as people and, and reflect that and because they continue to resonate. Mm. So when when you do that, yeah. th that's when you have a hit song <laughs> because you're touching people, because right. it resonates with people. Right. When, you, when, you, when you look at the best written songs in history, those are the ones uh, that really connect with people beyond just the music, because sometimes, right. you know, the, the music is cool, especially we talk about music in the 80s, it's, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, I do like the 80s, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of aggressive sometimes, but when you listen to the words, and, you know, some people really gravitate to the words, but whatever the case is, the, the songs that really resonate with people are the ones that talk about humanity, right. um, the human condition, or just us and how right. we, we are as people, so... Um, yeah, that, that is so true. We're we're a mirror, if if anything. So it this is just our role to answer your question. This mm -hmm. is just our role, I believe. But it it takes people to be people, even if you know they're just engaging and not necessarily creating as right. an artist. If if they're you know on on that end of things, but they're still part of the cycle. So it's, it's really 
more about a cycle of just being people. Right. And this is our role right. in being people. We use our tools, our instruments to do that. Right. That's interesting. I went. Um, I went to. I volunteer at the um, at the Detroit Film Theater at the DIA, and I volunteered at the movie Say Amen Someone. Or somebody. Okay. And it was about gospel. I saw that title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, it was really good. That was on this, this recent collection. It just, yeah, this was this past weekend. Nice. And they were taught, it was about the history of gospel music. Nice. And how it it touched so many people and continues to touch so many people mm -hmm. because you're talking about the human experience. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the human experience within a spiritual setting where people are looking for... Um, that peace mm -hmm. and looking for answers mm -hmm. and I feel like that was that's the perfect place for that's the perfect place for music to be mm. because it in, a, in its essence is a reflection it's spiritual and is a reflection of what's happening yeah yeah you notice uh, on another end though a lot of his songs are instructional so uh, communication mm. you know I think communication is a big thing when you're talking to people I notice that's another thing that makes a hit song mm. so you you'll see um you know even a lot of the hymns you you'll see especially more like in uh, black churches and more of the african american hymns yeah. like those books uh you you'll see a lot of things that are said through those that so is um you know keep keep faith right, and things right, like that you know right. so that you there's instruction that's true yeah um but also What's the name? Cha cha, cha cha. You know, uh, to the left, to the left. You know, all that. Also that that's instructional, and that's a hit song. You know, uh, not Tussie Roll. All those, it's those are instructional songs. So even those, you, they resonate on all levels. It does. In the church, but or otherwise, it also makes me feel some type of way about like about what makes a hit song because. <laughs> What makes a hit song today is very different than what made a hit song in the 70s, you know, or it makes me feel some type of way. Yeah. What are we endorsing as, as a people? What you mean? I feel like... You don't endorse the cha-cha? <laughs> that, I'm, cha I'm not against the cha-cha. It's a communal dance. There's nothing wrong with that. Cha -cha I'm talking about like hit radio songs mm -hmm. that are about our vices mm -hmm. and instead of being about upliftment are instructing people to do otherwise or to instructing people to give in to your vices almost mm -hmm. and glamorizing that mm -hmm. and so it makes it makes me wonder who is it it's art it, it, there's there's a reflection right there is a reflection of okay that is something that is going on mm -hmm. but are we as a community endorsing it and there's artists who are endorsing it. It just makes mm -hmm. me, you know, just question what is it that we accept as acceptable to, or a normative part of our culture mm -hmm. versus what we don't want. It's, it's whatever I feel. We we have to make it ourselves as far as like what what we promote, what we endorse, what we uh, what we want to see highlighted. And right. we, we do have control with it. You know, even though you have these companies that uh, put, you know, what you say, uh, Clear Channel, iHeart Media, and uh, XM, and you know all these different uh, huge media companies, yeah. not just radio, even yeah. just huge media companies. So they, it, it's always the case. Even when you look at film, there before ratings, films had they were basically a lot of uh, porn-like films happening in regular theaters, mm. and so that was happening bef in theaters wow. before ratings. So. It, for way before us, there's always going to be vices. There's always right. going to be displayed, especially right. through uh, art and media. There's even when you go to uh, art uh, events, you're going to have some things that maybe you don't want kids seeing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But that's that's art. So it's I think that's always going to happen. Right. So I, really, I I think um, you know though huge companies are putting billions behind. Thing, you know, vices and things that we, we don't always want to promote as a, as a culture and we uh, may not accept as our own culture, right, right. what I feel is the best thing that we could do is promote the great things in our culture mm -hmm. and put that to the forefront. And we do have the power to push that yeah. just as high as uh, some of these companies. 
uh, arguing as we speak, and that's culture as a mm. tool. Yeah, that is culture as a tool. Angela said NPR People. for life. There we go, NPR. Public radio. Sure, you love for the public. music. For the public. <laughs> That is, that is the way that, but what are some, what are like specific ways that you use culture as a tool then in your artistry? Yeah, so when I think about culture as a tool, uh, people, I, I think that's what it amounts to. So as, as we, our conversation that we've been talking about so far has been, really it's been centered around people, people uh, individually, but as, as a culture, or, I mean, as a collective, I'm right, sorry, of right, people. Right. This is a group, right? These are the people that we live around. This is the people in our neighborhood, this is the people in our city, right. this is the people in our state, this is the people in the whole United States, right? It, it just, you know, these are the people, even the people in Windsor, right? Yeah. We, we share, we share right. a little bit right. too. Right. So um, it really just amounts to people and how we're intersecting with each other and how this all rubs off and how we created ourselves, but we're we're all creating it. So um, as, as people, we have have power that is greater than money. So mm -hmm. when I when I think about it as a tool, um, you know, you have billions that are going behind, you know, m mega stars, you know, right. performing at the right. NFL, right. or you know, you have just money being thrown to many intentions out there. But in the face of good and bad intentions happening, you know, with money that makes things move quickly. That that's what money is good for. It makes things move very quickly. Mm. So in the face of those things hap happening very quickly, you know, kind of uh, going to, you know, just organizing and being about people, mm -hmm. our tool or our instrument is is really the culture, but people. What's behind culture is people. So that that is our, as a collective, that is right. our tool that we have in the face of billions that makes things move quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, I don't have billions, at least not yet. Uh, but in the meantime, I do have my people and we have people power, right. all power to the people. Right. Uh, that was, that was the Black Panther. Uh, <coughs> that, that was uh, what they said. It wasn't just, you know, to, to the black people, but it was it's to the yellow people, it's to the brown people, it's to the red people, it's, it's, it's to the black man, it's, it's to is to all people. And the government was afraid of that because yeah. there was intense power there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in collecting people and um, just bringing people together in that way. Mm -hmm. Becky says hi. Hi, Becky. Hey, Becky. That's deep. That's deep. Mm -hmm. That um, is that part of the, the vision that you guys have at Decipher? Yes. And could you tell us a little bit about Decipher? Yes. So Decipher, so I'm a musician and a couple years ago, or a few now, um, uh, two other MCs, that's lyricist or that's a rapper to some of y'all, uh, we joined together uh, because of a few frustrations of being a music artist in the mm -hmm. city. And that includes uh, rehearsal spaces and the, um, the very few, well, at that time, there, there were no rehearsal spaces. I, I believe there's still no rehearsal spaces uh, here in the city limits. And you have to find an adequate space uh, that you could rent by the hour or at least by the month or, you know, just something that's right. accessible right. To, to build your craft. You had to go outside of the city to find a, a good space to do it, a safe space to do that, where you could leave your equipment. So we were just seeing all these issues that, that we were facing. Uh, in order to continue to build our careers from right, here, right. Uh, especially at that time, that uh, and before that, I would say, especially like during the recession and that, mm -hmm. that the bankruptcy. Don't forget, we had bankruptcy, uh, right. uh, what 2013. So uh, a lot of these things are affecting how um, everybody is mm -hmm. operating in the city, and I think right. that you, we, as a collective, we recognize. You know, let's let's start to dissect the ways that this is. Uh, you know our surroundings are affecting mm. how we build our our artistry right. and our careers right. here from the city. Right. So we collectively call what we do decipher. We are deciphering or decoding mm. how to do that, how to continue to build our careers from here. Because I, you know, none of us at least yet have the answer. So we're still right. kind of figuring right. it out as far as okay, how do you continue to build? Because you know, at one point you you had Motown that was firmly established here, but has has moved west. Right. Uh, you you have uh, you have uh, different label. I mean, many labels that have have been here. 
um, and you have even the punk scene that has been uh, heavy here in the city. Yeah. Uh, so you, you've had many waves of music uh, and, and even techno uh, that has uh, has a huge root, a huge root uh, in, in Detroit, uh, but now has since gone global. Jay Dilla, you know, right. from Conan Gardens and that whole sound. And I mean, it's even affecting Japan. I mean, they love yeah. it out there. Yeah. So just to see how, how much has come from the city um, and h how some of those things have happened, you know, those, I mean, they actually are whole genres. It's not even just, you know, the most famous person to do it came from Detroit. It's actually it's like whole genres, genres yeah. were being yeah. created. And that doesn't happen often. That happens every few decades, maybe. Yeah. So, you know, with, with genres <clears throat> being created from here, we we wanted to be able to uh, one share that because believe it or not some people don't even know about yeah. James Yancey. Yeah. So you know first of all coming together and sharing our knowledge right, uh, and then on top of that building on how we can continue to build mm -hmm. our careers with that knowledge as a foundation. Right. So we believe that uh, and why we call it Decipher Detroit Cipher is uh, it comes from the hip-hop tradition of cypher or freestyle you right. get you get in a circle and, and you're ciphering right. and everybody in their circle is contributing something so you know you you i'm i'm not necessarily a lyricist i'm more of the beat maker yeah. so i could beatbox you know i'm the drummer i'm the percussionist so i'll bring the rhythm to that circle mm -hmm. and then you you have the lyricist that will all you know spit off the top of the dome but this is a cypher and everybody's contributing to that cypher so in yeah. the same way we feel that as musicians and as people that use music as our tool, uh, we're we're bringing our knowledge to mm. this circle of people, this collective of people, as in a hip hop cipher. Ciphering is a very very powerful tool mm -hmm. because I feel like not only does it bring people together, but it gives people it gives people a means to explore yourself mm -hmm. within a group setting mm -hmm. and. It gives you the opportunity to let go of that fear that you may have mm. and let whatever is coming to you come to you mm. in that moment. And That's you guys true. are doing Agreed. monthly, you guys are doing actual monthly ciphers. Hey, they have been so far, they've been monthly. So Jam session hey. ciphers. Yeah, so these these jam sessions, so, so the cipher, we, we came out of a frustration uh, and we're solutionaries. So we figured, all right, how can we bring uh, or find solutions, decode and get this uh solve our problems so we figured okay let's let's start by finding a space and uh, solving this rehearsal space issue right so uh we we had a few things I, I won't share you know all the details of the story but basically the space wasn't working out as as much as we were like uh during our first year so we figured you know what in in lieu of uh, a space we would cultivate the people let's mm -hmm. cultivate the community Right, because the space, okay, we're this is gonna take some time, but right. in the meantime, we can we have decided to cultivate the community of people right. and build right. that. Right. Um, so and still work on having a permanent space that we can call home. Um, so in cultivating community, cultivating people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, showcasing uh, real culture, we partnered with the Riverfront Conservancy, mm -hmm. uh, and they run the Quinter Cut. So the Quinter Cut. Uh, is a pedestrian highway that's in Detroit for those who are not here. And the Quinter Cut has a stage where they just built. Um, so, <coughs> so because their first year got off to a slow start, it was cool, but they, they wanted to amp it up a little bit more. So their second season, which was 2018 summer, mm -hmm. uh, Decipher brought our network of, of musicians to that stage to put what we feel is real authentic culture right. and it right. speaks for the rhythm of our city right. and we were putting that pretty much in the center of our city mm. uh, under the, the Quinter Cut. So this was just one of uh, many partnerships that we have and that we've been cultivating to um, again share you know what we have between us right yeah. but continue to build so that we can build our careers from this city. Right, um, right. But awareness, we felt, was a big part of it. So that's why we chose to partner with them because by being on the Dequinder Cut, it's a very public space. Very and accessible to anyone, whether they yes. were planning on being there or not. Yeah, Which a lot of surprises. A lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. I have some thoughts about that that I want to ask you, but before, let's What's take that? some comments. 
Um, Christina says, most leaders who become true leaders uh, of people are usually uplifted to that position. Leaders, hmm. leaders <laughs> of money, power, buy into, that, uh, buy into that leadership. The trick is being a people's leader hmm. with money. Hmm. That, that, Interesting, that's yeah. That's a good way to live. A right. people's leader with money. Uh, what what Jay Jay was talking about, you know, if if I call poor, you know, when I'm the only one that's rich and everyone is, is broke around me, mm. you know, so yeah, I, I really live by that. You gotta gotta do this with your people. You, you have to. You by yourself. What right? is the point of what? doing it by yourself? Why? What is the point? You were my teacher for Arabic 130, best teacher. Well, <laughs> um, the reason why I like um. Thanks, Ish. Yeah, thank you for that. The reason why I like that you guys partnered and did the, the shows at the Dequinder Cut along with these new jams in uh, Music Town, yep. which is above Coffee Town, yeah, yeah. is the landscape of Detroit, as we all know, has been shifting, mm -hmm. right? And in, it's not just downtown, but outside of downtown, places mm -hmm. are heavily gentrified. Mm -hmm. And it makes... Uh, anyone who is a part of the community feel like what is happening to the culture of our city mm -hmm. um, and to make sure that even though there are billions of dollars that are coming in and there are these waves of changes that are going to happen in the city mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. because there's so much money behind it that um, that we as artists as culture creators as community members and you guys as decipher are actively saying we have a space, we have a voice, we have, um, and we're here to represent ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important. That's like, uh, that to me is really the crux of using culture as your currency, mm -hmm. using culture as, as a tool in that artistry. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. It is our currency. We better use it wisely. So uh, that brings me to some, I don't know if, uh, if how, how, you know, firm you wanna can we can we move a little left? We can right? move. But uh where you wanna take us it so that that brings to mind uh you know a recent uh issue that, that happened it unfold start to unfold this week uh, right. with the foundation hotel. Right. Um but you know you when you talk about culture and, and that being our currency, um that's that's kind of stirring some things up because now, you know, the, the main thing that was happening down there at the foundation hotel is which really activated mm -hmm. that space, they've decided to pull out. Could you tell us what happened for those who don't know? Um, so the Foundation Hotel is is a boutique hotel uh, downtown Detroit. And mm -hmm. um, they, actually their, their first year uh, anniversary, One Freak, the group that I played with, we performed there, we were invited. Last year, right? um, so that was my introduction to it. Uh, yeah, last year, it was like in the summer. Yeah. Um, but that was my introduction to it. And uh, the, uh, Peter over there who who brought us in he he's he's cool people um, so you know individually we we've met some really cool people um, right. at the hotel uh, as an institution however uh, there was a the lawsuit that was brought against a federal lawsuit <clears throat> that was brought against them um, I guess this week right and and they're currently fighting that <coughs> it was uh, it's discrimination and this is actually their HR mm. uh, coordinator yeah. I believe it was the yeah. title HR coordinator so if, if there's any person seeing, you know, uh, like the, I mean, HR is human resources. Exactly. If, they're, if they're seeing if the company, seeing... that's that's one of the people that I, I feel would be seeing multiple aspects of the right. company. Right. Um, but she she brought charges against them for discrimination. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I I have um, I I know about other experiences. Right. Uh, so even beyond this young ladies, there are other personal experience that, that I have, uh, that I know about, um, that are real, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So either way, uh, with, with this federal lawsuit, um, you know, you, they don't, they don't have what they had on Thursdays as far as the, the flow of people, as far as on the like, cultural side. Right. Um, so, so you can see that it's, uh, from their recent actions, you know, you can tell that there's been a shift. Yeah. There, there's been a shift. Yeah. Um, and that, they feel it as well right. with that not being present on Thursdays, right. which was the right. day that most of it at least was happening. So um, it's just very interesting to see that how this is going to play out. I really want to, uh, you know, keep keep in tune with 
uh, them individually at the right. hotel and also uh, through the lawsuit and see you know what actually comes out through through this whole uh, you know through this whole investigation right. you know how, how this how this goes federally so um, you know it's very interesting but what I will say is that the foundation is not the only one you know it's not you, you have personal experiences right. with with other venues so you know with us experiencing this uh you know it seems a little bit more frequently than, than i used to yeah um it's it's something worth pointing out and you, you're right you know the because of the billions of dollars that's being spent um they're not going anywhere at least yeah. not not now yeah you know and and there's only more investment what's it mid there's more that's coming that's already been in the works it's, for years now it's here i mean it's, it's always planned at least five and ten years ahead so mm -hmm. you know there's uh, what's the name? Chemical Bank from Midland uh, just purchased TCF uh, for a few billion, and they they have uh, they've been having wow. a huge presence presence in Detroit more and more over the last few years. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, and that's just the most recent few billions being spent. You know, uh, so there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of development happening on, right. on many levels, where whether it's the physical. Or, or just uh, bringing more more people mm. in, into the downtown area. That's that's a big focus of of all the energy that's happening right now. But what's interesting is a lot of these places mm -hmm. they want to bring people <clears throat> down, but they also want to be down with the people. Mm -hmm. They want to <laughs> they want to be down <laughs> with be with down. The, like especially at foundation. You're you're bringing in artists. Right, that are because they were working with we are culture creators. The artists mm. that are coming in are predominantly people <clears throat> people of color. You have yeah. black and brown <clears throat> artists, and that's that's the culture. Like did, you, did you do so when you walk <laughs> in? It's the craziest thing, and it really is. It speaks for Detroit. So, so when you walk in, literally, it's it's kind of a, one a square room, and if you split that in half, the bar splits it in half. On this side of the bar, it's a ton of melanin. And then yes. on the other side of the bar where where uh, there's, you know, at least six month wait to, to sit down and, and pay for food. Uh, Different it's, world. It's uh, no melanin. <laughs> I'll put it like that. So, and, yeah. but that's on the other side of the bar in the same room. In the same room. And, and even when you see some of the patrons that get up, uh, you know, and, and kind of, you know, walk through, they, they look a little anxious like, oh, I, I, I didn't know this was... This I didn't know this was yeah, happening yeah, they, right now. This is not the, what they had on my these, all these people <laughs> from? <laughs> it's not what I paid for. All this hippity hoppity. <laughs> so, so, but it's very interesting. So, so again, it's, you know, if, it's stark and it's in your face. It's in your face, and uh, but, but again, you know, I really want to, you know, keep focus. In in when I say focus, it's actually the opposite of really drawing back out it, to see that this is what's happening through our city. Right. Uh, where where you live is close to a border, and this is a border that I know very well because I right. grew up on on this side of town. Right. And you know you you had uh, you know the, the garbage issue where where uh, Gross Point was was throwing garbage in in uh, Detroit's area and yeah. uh, all, all sorts of trash and stuff. Uh, For those who don't know, I live by Mac, and Mac is very. You go on one mm -hmm. side, it's black and, and white. Alter. Yep. It's Different universe. Yep, different universe. Uh, you know, with with Gross Point blocking off a street, they totally reformed the street right. pavement and all. Because I've seen it before and after, and they reformed the street so that it limits people from getting into Gross Point from Detroit. This is on the border. So, so I've lived with this thing as as a kid. You know, what I'm saying from from a young age in my formative years, seeing this where I walk. You know, what I'm saying where where I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's really nothing new. So when I see this, this is really just a, a small expression mm -hmm. of what has been happening in our right. city. And obviously it continues to happen. So, you know, when we look at it in that type of way, then we, then we see the rhythm of it and we right. see that, you know, right. okay, how do we really break this rhythm and, and not just, you know, point this one thing out and, you know, only blame this, this, this right. one thing for what it is. And it's just right. small. Just representation. Mm. Well, then, in terms of trying to break that rhythm, for me, I feel like it's it's taking it's breaking a rhythm that's off beat and putting it back on beat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're putting it back on beat, 
practically speaking as an organization as like decipher or even as an artist um, as as performing artists how do you select who you want to work with and how do you select where you want to perform and where you want to what space you want to take up mm -hmm. to a have a presence but be also self-preservation mm -hmm. understood understood um I, I I don't know the answer to that. I think, you know, for us, it's kind of, it's really case by case because it's, I don't know, I see it as it is really, well, it is a relationship. So with any relationship that you're starting, you, you know, you kind of want to just dip your toe into the water or yeah. just, you know, see that pay, face value yeah. for a yeah. little bit and then start to get closer and closer. Um, however, as in the case with the Riverfront and the Quinder Cut, that was from a one-on-one -on -one relationship mm. that I had with somebody that I worked for before. Okay. Uh, so, it, you know, you have, again, relationships. It, that was already established. Right. And in my new position, in uh, her, you know, more uh, prominent position, right. you know, sh we were able to make this happen, and it, and it was a good time, you right. know. And then um, I, I feel like all of these things is how we decide, is kind of how we decide relationships right. with people. And a lot of times they do come from relationships with right. individual people right. first. Uh, even even with uh, our most recent uh, connection with uh, Music Town, where we've been doing the jam sessions, that came from a, a two degree uh, relationship yeah. where I was was introduced to the director Annie over there, and um, you know we we made it happen. So Annie and Angela used to work together mm -hmm. at NPR. Shout out NPR again. <laughs> NPR making shit happen. Yep. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really, I feel like connections between people first, yeah. uh, at least is how we, de we've been deciding a lot of our things because if you just like, Hey, okay, you know, Oh, you're brand new. All right, cool. Then you, then you see what happens with one of the venues that you worked with. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah. you cool. Okay. You, you brand new and you, you try to just pop up in there, but, uh, it, it could work out really well, yeah. but then yeah. it could also work out, you know, poorly too. You know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like um, networking and just being out there is so important. Mm -hmm. Because on the one part, it's like, yeah, it's like going to these venues and going to these places and meeting people mm -hmm. and forming those connections. And, and really judging for yourself, does this seem like it's genuine yeah. or not? You and know, really like, be in that space. And really be in that yeah. space and, and give it give it what it deserves give it give it some time and see what mm -hmm. you think about it mm -hmm. christina said personalization yeah absolutely because you have to feel out you have to feel out not just the energy in the space but like who's running that space yeah. what's the intention yes. of the people that are running that space yes. because that's very telling for what they want you there for yeah. or if they want you yeah that's real you know and then on the other hand so that uh, that's like personal like personal connections but then on the other hand networking and letting other artists know that hey this is what's been going on or these mm -hmm. are these are cool people or this you know these are issues that have been it's going vital. on that's so vital like yes. when the when stuff went you know when shit went down with the foundation hotel yep. when even with l club when that stuff happened uh, last, last year it's uh, like and they they were giving out free food on christmas they they were saying, <laughs> they're like <"Really?" laughs> They really, they were That's free crazy. food. I didn't know Their that. doors open. I drove by. Wow. Their doors open. Free food on on the marquee. Wow. Yeah, that was it's right like this. that stuff is so important because that's when they realize that even though it's um, even though as individuals we may not may not have those billions of dollars, mm -hmm. we have people, we have connections, we mm -hmm. have community, and you can if you mess it up, communities will completely leave. Mm -hmm. And that will hurt your business. Mm -hmm. And and again, back to it being the currency. Uh, if if we really uh, think about it as as that, and even more than just paper money, but really just how we you know spend what what we're kind of working mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I really feel that we should. That would really cause us to think more about investing more in each other and ourselves right. and our community. Right. Because we realize how precious this is and how we can use it. Because it, for us to invest in it, you, you want to use it too. You don't just invest in something right. to not eventually use it. Even if you wait a while, right, right. you know, you invest because you it's for the, the long-term use. Right, right. So, again, you know, I, I feel like it's our currency, <coughs> but, but not just to, you know, spend and just, 
you know, uh, it's just, not just the money. wallet. Yeah, it's not just cash, but this is something that we're invested in so that we, as a community, mm -hmm. if we're strong and we're built up and we have a good foundation, then we could spend that currency when it matters. Right. Spe we could spend that currency when it when that matters, and mm -hmm. we can also um, have already solidified our um, our space mm -hmm. and and our power in mm -hmm. that. Like that to me is so important because you're right. It's not just it's not just currency, but it's us as a people thinking long term, thinking generationally. Mm -hmm. Like most what, definitely. What are we doing not just for our generation, what are we doing for our future generations? Most definitely. Most definitely. Because cause bike lanes, even the bike lanes <laughs> were planned out five and ten years ahead of time. So, yes. So if you if you think about bike lanes and, and paint, you know, ten years before, uh, then how much our culture and our, our children... They're already here. On more. See? Y all, y all yeah. Oh, abandoned all, buildings and bike lanes. All you have to do is follow the bike follow lanes. Follow the bike lanes, and you will know. You will know what's up. What's happening? Y'all, y'all want to get in real estate? Follow <laughs> the bike lanes. <laughs> That's the truth, though. I'm not lying. That's the truth, and it's like that. It's so important for for people of color, especially black people in the city, mm -hmm. get into real estate, get mm -hmm. into property, get into mm -hmm. owning space. Mm -hmm. Not just taking up someone's space, but also mm -hmm. owning space. Agreed. It's so important. Agreed. Do you have any last minute thoughts? Wait, before last minute? Yeah, before you share something, we're almost in an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we could we could keep on. I mean, I have I brought my um, my my pads. I need to hook it up though. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, you can you can you share can a couple of things, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay. But any, was there anything else that you wanted that you felt was really important that you wanted to? Um, let me see. What else? Yeah, we talked a little bit about the cipher. Um, I, I could use this as a chance to plug. Yeah, a couple please. Of okay, so uh, 13th, which is Wednesday uh, next, mm -hmm. uh, will be our next jam session. We're going live. Uh, this Ooh. will be our first one live. Nice. Um, we have been holding them since December in this form uh, down at Music Town. Music Town is a full studio, mm -hmm. which is inside Hockey Town. Um, and though it is Hockey Town, it is a, a pretty well-equipped studio um, inside of that building, you wouldn't believe. So on the second floor, yeah. uh, inside of Hockey Town. I was surprised. Yeah, it's a it's a it's nice cool place and it's kind of comfortable too. So uh, we've been using that as uh, our our nomadic type of home that we've mm -hmm. we've set up shop. Uh, but they're cool people over there. Andy and Ryan, the engineer, they've been uh, doing this pretty well. So uh, we're hosting our next one there on the thirteenth. On the thirteenth, which is Wednesday, yes. what we're also asking you to bring is not just your voice, not just your your piano skills or your, your paradiddles and whatever you have for the jam session, uh, but bring your attention because uh, Rocket, Rocket Man will be performing uh, some of his new music. And also we will, um, we will be raising instruments. We will be accepting used, lightly used instruments for high school students. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, back to community with the cypher, we feel that, you know, we can, we can utilize, and I think this is also us practicing how we can come together and uh, have a real, tangible impact. Right. But just by us gathering. Right. Uh, so uh, the first time that we gathered, we uh, raised gifts uh, from the Alternatives for Girls wish list, mm. uh, and this was for uh, the holiday season. We raised gifts for the young ladies that come through Alternatives for Girls. A lot of them have uh, been sexually trafficked or homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few of them also have children themselves. So Alternatives for Girls shelters them and also brings them off the streets. Mm -hmm. So uh, as part of the wish list items that we were raising uh, through our community of musicians, uh, we, um, we got gifts, food, uh, jewelry, things for the young ladies to feel at least just a little bit more at home. 
Uh, so now in February, we're raising instruments for Detroit. Uh, cool. We're raising instruments for Detroit high school students throughout the city. Um, so a little bit more about that. After we'll be this right back. Break. February 13th. We'll be right back. Hey. Part two, digging deeper. So right here, Wayne, Junie, you want to play some stuff for us? Yeah, just a little something. Some That's rhythms. Um, just showing y'all what I loaded up. Uh, right before I came, no, it was a few days ago. I uh, loaded this up. I'm gonna get out your way. Uh, just sharing some new music. So, I, I'm i a percussionist, but I, I have been producing a lot lately. I've been fortunate to have some uh, good friends to work with, and we've been creating. Um, so, it's inspired me to really just, uh, to, to just explore more of the rhythm section. You know, the keys, the bass, the drums, all of it make make more so that's all this is So uh, just as far as rhythm, that's just a little example. But as far as rhythm, uh, one thing that I wanted to bring to you today was uh, just something that is called the 3-2 clave. So um, in, in my music, uh, this is the, the foundation for, for a lot, really. You know what I'm saying? I, I think as humans, uh, as humans, uh, like groups of people, there are many cultures that have used this um, this pattern, you know. So three, two, clave. Uh, okay. Let's find a better. There we go. Two 
Allow me three, two. So this, for me, uh, just kind of back to origins and um, where my music comes from. You know, what, what I have absorbed as music and what has affected me to this day is that rhythm and then the the other rhythms that come out of it. So mm-hmm. the 3 2 clave, there's, there's many other claves uh, and all sorts of names for them. Right. Um, but they come, you know, from the African... Uh, tradition and also the uh, Latin tradition Mm -hmm. but they're used in many other places in the world other people have found this rhythm but that's just to show how I guess how perfect that is you know and how how many ways you can flip it you can remix it you know this this is like one of those things that have been remixed for ages you know when we talk about the remix and we talk about sampling you know this this is one of the first samples right here, yeah. and and it, uh, it it communicates uh, so much. So um, yeah, it, it really affected me. Really affected me. You know what I love is that rhythms make your body move just oh, naturally. Yeah. It's just like it's seeing that physical rhythm. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Yes. So you get to see a little action here. But these are uh, recent songs. I've been trying to capture different flavors, mm-hmm. uh, playing a little background music now. But yeah, okay. yeah. With that, thank you so much for being here. For sure. I for really sure. appreciate it. It was it was great to be in your presence and in in your whole workspace. It's kind of cool being mm-hmm. back here, seeing the back yeah. end of things. Um, but thanks for the invitation. Yeah, it's great to be here. Many blessings to your home. Many thank blessings you, to you, your thank family. You, thank many you. blessings to everybody on this uh, on this feed who saw us today. Yeah, so many people came on. Thank you guys so much. Um, the video is going to be linked. It's 24 hours on Instagram. It'll be on YouTube, Facebook. The link is on my Instagram. This video will be up along with all of the links to your stuff. Up yes. Coming. Decipher February 13. Bring an instrument for high school students. Uh, the instruments lightly used go mm-hmm. towards uh, go to directly to programs uh, throughout Detroit. Uh, we deliver them straight to the young people's hands. We have photos to prove it, uh, and then the money that you donate, that you give and contribute, mm-hmm. goes towards the repairs for those mm-hmm. lightly okay. used instruments because sometimes Perfect. they still need a little repair. Perfect. Uh, so, Perfect. so we repair them as well. But yeah, we're talking about Cast Tech renaissance uh golfers and all sorts of schools uh th- throughout the city so and what time um, is it at uh so this is 7 p.m wednesday the 13th that's the day before thanksgiving i mean thanksgiving before valentine's day hey they're all holidays i mean that's uh, a thankful that, day too yes, right I, I thank you <laughs> that's an love. actual thankful day uh, but yes yeah, the day before so don't give me that excuse of oh it's, it's valentine's day no it's not it's the day before uh, but so you can celebrate with, it there yeah exactly come bring your loved ones exactly have, have a great time uh, but also just hold on your calendar February 22 is Double Entendre Decipher mm-hmm. we're working with a podcast called Double Entendre and they are bringing their podcast live so we're calling it uh, Double Entendre Live uh, Decipher Live uh, and we are going to have a fun event uh, where we have two battling playlists and Ooh. five songs on five songs being played live and who songs feel the best the theme mm. is feel good music so oh, okay. uh we're, we're okay. gonna test that out and see uh how this works out bringing it live but it's gonna be fun regardless uh looking forward to this and more as we continue through the year many more partnerships many more relationships being built um, and community culture culture with that that's the end of our episode we are going to be back here every tuesday at seven log in tell your friends post about it peace peace bless you cool uh so this is
for Trayvon and Mike Brown. When I bounce I ask you can trunk down. A shot to every black man who got gun down. By the police with no convictions in their run round. When you put in this other time down, for Trayvon and Mike, when I bounce I ask you can trunk down. A shot to every black man who got gun down. By the police with no convictions in their run round. When you put in this other time down, for Trayvon and Mike Brown.